Okay, so uh, last week uh, we mentioned a bit about uh, Google's, like we have, it is called Google Workspace or Google Suits. So if you go and you search about Google Workspace, uh, you can see it will mention a couple of, of things. So you have Gmail, you have Google Sheets, Google Classroom, uh, Google Docs, there are so many. They're also known as Google Suite or Google Suite, depending on how you pronounce it. Uh, it's the same thing. So one of the assignments, one of the assignments was to do some task with uh, there was a spreadsheet uh, which you are supposed to you uh, to make some changes on it and so uh, two people only submitted the work uh, I commend them for that uh, that's a great job so in case you didn't know how to go about it uh, when you open your email so there's the email uh, you you can see there is this here it's it's for the apps these are the google apps or so when you click on that you can see it can open several things you have your business profile manager you have youtube maps all those things uh, google meet everything you can see is here so so you can see everything is here uh, you have uh, this is your account and all that. So you can either use Google Drive. So when you click on Google Drive, it will open. And once it opens, uh, you can see like I have categorized different things here. So <clears throat> you can come here. If you want to create maybe a Google Sheet, Google Doc, you can see. Uh, there's this option here. So you have Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, Google Forms, and there's so much more. <clears throat> Google Maps, <clears throat> Google Sites, there's a lot. Uh, just by going to Google Drive, you can do a lot. You can upload uh, your images. Some, some of the clients, they will upload their images here, and then they will give you a link for you to go and then to download. And so they can name whatever they give to you into different uh, categories. It can be a file or it can be like a folder. Like this is a folder here that I've named here books. It's a folder and it has several books inside. So another way that you could have done it, when you come here, you can also see when you scroll down, you have Google Docs, you have Google Sheets, uh, you have slides, blogger, classroom, all these apps. So you, you need to have some knowledge of it. You have Google Forms. Like when you are creating surveys, you can use these Google Forms. Uh, you have Google Ads. That's when you learn about uh, running ads on Google. So you are to do something with uh, Google Sheets. So there was a file that I shared of spreadsheet and it contains some financial data. So yours was to upload it online or to upload it on Google Sheets. And the way you would have done it, you would have just come here and then you go to Google Sheets and then you can upload from there if you want. So like you can click create new and then from there you can just uh, upload it so this assignment that was done by one person so i'm here so when you click on the whatever spreadsheet you can see i can go back here so this was work by one person so if you come here to file so you have opened whichever spreadsheet uh, let's say you have spreadsheet on your on your computer and you want to upload it to Google Sheets. So let's say they have shared with you a CSV file and you need to make maybe a summary of everything. So you can just come here, file, 
and then you can import like that you can also download this if you want to download and there are various formats you'll be given here that you can download in so this was your task uh, you are to do something similar like you can see i can go in and i can just select or whatever i want so for example if i clear i can just select only commissions like that So if I click commissions, you can see I can be able to go through this data within a short time. So this 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 was the assignment that you were to do uh, for the previous week. So I guess now you have a bit knowledge. You can go in, uh, you can practice how to create uh, Google Sheets. You can practice how to, to create uh, Google Docs. You can do Google Slides and all that. So you just come here. You can either go to Google Drive and then you select whatever you want, or you can come down here and you can do whatever you'd like to do. Okay. So I had shared some uh, some sites here. There are two of them. So we have this one. So we have some site here that I had shared with you and we'll just use them to discuss a few things today. So I, I had mentioned today, I will be looking at stuff to do with the design. Yeah, so we have to go through design process. Uh, that's what uh, we are supposed to look at today. And so when we, we talk of design process or design steps, they mostly have to do with web design or web development, or not only that, even app development. And I guess the same can apply even in graphic design. And so with design process is uh, you have a client, and maybe they're interested in you developing a website for them. So you have to go to follow a certain steps. So the first step is usually to define the website's goals. So every client, they have a different purpose for their website. So like uh, these two here, So you can see there's this one here. So this one's the goal is for people to register for a specific training, you can see. So this is more of a landing page. So what we call as a landing page or a funnel more than a website. And then you have this one also, you can see that's there, their purpose. So if you go to other sites, like let's say you go to Jumia, So if you go to Jumia, their purpose is to sell products. And so that is the goal. The goal is for them to sell you uh, products. You can see if you come here, you are able to place your order. So by adding to cart and then you can make the payment and it can be delivered to you. You can see they do free delivery for you. So that's the first thing is to determine what is the, the goal of the given website like what's the purpose so the next thing <clears throat> uh, is to plan your website design strategy so you need to come up with with a strategy so the the, the strategy includes uh, some of the content that will go on that website so you need content so like we have we have these websites here 
So you can see this content here. There's an image here. And then there's other stuff here. You can see all these images and content. And then you have these icons and text. Then you have testimonials here, images and what people are, are talking about. And so you need to have that strategy of everything. You also, if you go into deep or details, uh, you can come up with, we, we have what we call wireframe. So let me just tap it here for you to see. We have wireframe. So you can come up with wireframes. You can come up with wireframes and you can see a website wireframe, also known as a page schematic or screen blueprint is a visual guide that represents the skeletal framework of our website. So you can come up with the with the wireframe. Uh, let me go into images. Maybe you can have a view of so like all this there, they are wireframes. So you can see it's just a framework of how you want uh, the website to look like. Uh, if you can see, so you, you have here like a logo, then you have your menu, then you have here maybe something go here. You have this, the menu here, you have the phone number here, and then you have, this one is called hero section. So you have here an image for the hero section, and then you want your website, maybe you have, want a video here, so you want to divide it into, uh, you have like two columns. So you have this one, which is very big to this end, then you have this. So when you see this X, it represents an image. So you have an image here, you have other information there. Let me see if I can open it in a, yeah, better. Yeah, so this, this is an example. So you have, this is a wireframe. So you have here like this, a logo, then you have here a menu, then you have here a search bar. Uh, you have here an image, which is called the hero section image. And then you have uh, you have some text here or some titles. We call them as headlines. And we have different categories of headlines. Uh, we have headline one all the way to headline six. So you just need to know uh, the importance of a given headline. And then, uh, you can see it is divided like into two columns. This one is huge compared to this other one. And then the first column, you can see they have image text. And then you have like buttons here. So these buttons, we call them call to action or CTA. Uh, so like if we go to these websites here, like if we come here, this add to cart is a button and is a call to action, CTA, call to action. So every website, uh, it needs to have like a call to action. Like what are, they, what are people going to do there? So you can see call to action is a marketing term for any design to prompt an immediate response or encourage an immediate sale. So it is usually say CTA. That's how it's, it's often referred as. CTA call to action. So you can see like here call to action is register now. Uh, here call to action is click here to save a seat. So they are usually buttons. So you can see these are the call to action. Then you have another headline here and you have like three images and they have text below them. And then you have here like icons and then you have text below. Then you go to the other one. So this, this is a wireframe. So all this, you, you realize that when you're actually doing the wireframe, uh, this can actually be like a real text. Okay, so this can be like a real text. So you, you have your content, you have your image, and so you're putting in here. Other than wireframe, uh, we also have prototypes. So unlike wireframe, a prototype is a bit different. So prototypes, uh, they, they look more of 
an actual website like you can click and like anything you you're going to do to your final website actually you you have that pictorial presentation on your prototype tool so most people they use figma uh, figma is a prototype tool you can also use canva for that and there are many other tools that you can use uh, for that so yeah so maybe when you get time you can go in and you can check more about a uh, prototype so all those are when you enter uh, the second which is plan your web website design strategy so you need content you need images uh you need if there will be links to other sites you need you're collecting all those information all those data and so you need all of them uh, together and then uh, after you have them you can do wireframes and you can do prototypes and then the next thing now you you are going to actually design and develop the website itself now you're going whichever tool you're going to use you can use we mentioned some last time you can use wordpress uh, you can use joomla all this we, we call them cms content management system you have wordpress you have shopify there are so many of them and then after you have developed the website next is you test your website so you can send it to some people they can test to see if it is working fine so they can see if they want to order something can they actually order it okay you can so that one is called ui user interrupt interruptivity you test ui you test ux ux is user experience and so you have to do all those kind of text uh, of tests to be sure that your website uh, it's working very fine your client's website it is working well and to their satisfaction and then once you have tested and it is good uh, the next thing is actually to launch and then you maintain the website so you launch for you to launch you'll need hosting so there are different kinds of hosting so you can use uh, different types of hosting. Uh, I can mention some companies that host websites. Uh, we have what we call Hostinger, and then we have Bluehost, we have GoDaddy, and there are so many other hosting sites or hosting companies. So that's basically the design process of when it comes to web design. So you have those five, five processes or five steps. Okay, so uh, next we are going to look at design principles. And the de design principles, they apply both to web design as well as graphic design. They also apply with video design or videography. They all apply the same. So the first design principle is contrast. So contrast, it comes in different ways. So when we look at this, like you can see these images here and you can see the text on them. So uh, one way I can say, you can see the background, it's clear. Let me go to this image here. So you can see this, this image, it is clear. And then you can see the background. So this, there's contrast here. There's contrast between the image and the background. I can go to the others. I can go to this one here. So you can see there's this image here and there's this text here. They don't interfere with each other. So you can see the image very well and you can read this text clearly. So the contrast here is clear. So the contrast is simply the difference. And you can see, so you can see like there's there's like a shape here that has been placed here and you can st still see through it and you can read this text. And then you can see these icons here. So all these, they are providing the contrast uh, so that the main purpose of contrast is readability. So are you able to read it clearly? So you can see like there's an image at the background and then 
you have your text here. There's this image here. So there's contrast uh, here. So when you do photo photography, like you take people's picture, one of the things that you are going to uh, focus more is the contrast. Like when you're taking someone's photo, uh, you can see the background. Is the background maybe interfering maybe with their ear so that you can see their ear? So when it comes, things like lighting and all that. So contrast is very important when you're doing web design or graphic design. And contrast comes in different ways. So you can see like there's this image here. Okay. Uh, so there's this text, not image. There's this text here. And then you can see there's the background here. So I'm just going to do something here. I'm going to let me open Canva. So we are going to, to be doing these principles just from scratch. So there's contrast, then there's alignment. Alignment is more of placement. Like how are you placing like uh, different components? So you can see like these ones, they are aligned here. So they are grouped here. And uh, this where they are placed. You, the image is placed here. You can see these texts, they are placed this side. And then you have, so all this there, alignment so these ones their alignment the next is typography so typography it helps with alignment and also it it helps with contrast so typography uh, it's 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 more of you have the colors then you have the type of font that you're going to use and then you have font size. All those, they are under typography. So I'm just going to do here a quick search of typography. And there are so many of them. So there are so many of typography. As you can see here, uh, typography is the art and technique of arranging type. Type here, it simply means the kind of text that you're going to use. So is the art and technique of arranging type to make written language legible. You can see the main purpose is for the text to be legible, readable, and appealing when displayed. And so there are so many. Uh, you can see the arrangement of type involves selecting typefaces. So many people when they hear typography, they, mo they, they only focus on typefaces. So typefaces you have like Vedana, I think you might have heard of Times New Romans. That's the common one. Almost everyone has heard of Times New Romans. It's it's very common. So Times New Romans, that's just a typeface. And then we have the sizes, the font sizes. You have line lengths, you have line spacing, you have letter spacing. All those, they fall under typography. And so... Many people, they just focus on the type of font when they hear of typography, but it's huge. You know, it's, it's very, very broad. So I'm just going here to do uh, a quick design. And then we'll use that design maybe to learn a couple of things. Then you have repetition. So repetition, it can be a style that is being repeated. So you can see like here, this is how this is presented here. Then they have used the same here. So this move a style repetition. So a style is being repeated. And then you can see how this, they are placed. So this also a kind of a form of style repetition. So you, there can be many different types of repetition. And the main purpose of repetition is just to place emphasis on something. Okay. And then you have balance. So balance and proportion. So you you can't have like uh, one text, let's say it's very huge, and then the other one is very small. 
within the same, maybe the same design. So it won't be proportion. It's like, it's like you have, so in real life, you know, a plate and a spoon, how they look like. So let's say you have a spoon that is very huge and then you have a plate that is very small. And then you have someone who is eating uh, using a big spoon and a very small, small plate. So you can see there won't be proportion in that. So it has to make sense. Like when you are, when you are designing something, it has to make sense. And then visual hierarchy, like whatever is important, it has to get more attention. So like when people come to your site, like what, what's the purpose? When people see your graphic design, like what's the purpose? So you have to place the visual hierarchy, like what's important comes first. Yeah. And then so you have movement, rhythm, texture, all those, uh, they kind of uh, repeat themselves. So we're just going to do a simple design here. I don't know if there's any question so far. I don't know if there's any question maybe about design processes or about the design principles. So we, we looked at some of the apps that we can use for graphic design and i mentioned a couple of them uh if you are really good into graphic design you can obviously use uh you can use adobe suits adobe suits it consists uh, of adobe illustrator even figma now is part of adobe suits so you have illustrator you have photoshop uh, you have uh there are so many of them, Lightroom and all that. So that's for graphic design. You have, we have then Canva. Canva is not part of Adobe Suits. So we have Canva. And then when you're doing web design, uh, if you don't have the skills of doing it from scratch, like when I talk of doing it from scratch, is someone who has the, the skills to do like a, uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, like they can make a website from scratch. They can do a HTML is the website framework. They can do CSS is what is used to style it, or they can do JavaScript, which it, it, it gives the website functionality. Like when you go to a website and you can click on it, So like if I can come here and I can click on this, this are uh, functionality. So here you have like this, this is the framework. Let me just do a quick one. So you, you can see in here, like there are different things that, okay, let me go here. Uh, so you can see this, this, this more of the web framework. You can see it always starts with the, uh, like a doc type, which defines the type of document, which is HTML. 
and then you have all this. So you don't really need to know all this. Uh, so this is just the web framework, this is the HTML. And then you have CSS down here, uh, which is for styling, okay. And then you have, so styling is like what you see here, like what you see here, like this blue, like the way you can see a distance from here to here, here to here, the way this image is placed here, and you can see when you scroll, it doesn't scroll, the image just sticks here. So all those, you do them using what we know, what is known as CSS or cascading style sheet. And then you have <clears throat> a JavaScript, which enables you to be able to to interact with with the site like when you click register you can see uh, you are able to submit your information like that then you can click okay so those those are just some of the tools but uh, what is important is for you to understand uh, to understand like the design principles uh, what each means and how to apply them. And then you have to understand the design process if you're going to do a website for someone. So I think my internet is a bit slow because you can see uh, this one is not loading. It's really taking long to load because I wanted to do some illustration of what I just discussed today. Let me change my internet and see. Okay, so it has load. So, <clears throat> so when you come to Canva and uh, you are doing maybe uh, some design for social media. So you can see like the good thing they have what is known as templates and then they have styles. So you can pick from either from templates, like you can see there templates here. Uh, when you see this thing here, Pro, it means uh, you can't use it unless you have to pay for it. So it is not free. So you can see like they have here. So uh, let me select that one. So you can see. Uh, we can learn some things just from this design. I'm not the one who's designed it. Uh, this one is already designed. So first, you can see uh, the kind of contrast. So like when you look the future of women in engineering. So when you come to, when you see this image, the first thing that you're going to see is this text before you can see any other thing. And that's because that's where emphasis is placed. So you can see the, the, the contrast between the background and the text. So let's say if, if I make this text to be black, you see, you can't see the text. And so that one, there won't be contrast. Or let's say I make it like that. So you can see it's still visible, but you can see it's not that clear. So you have to strain to read it. But if I'm putting uh, emphasis on it, I can use a color that can pop out like white, or I can use what they had used, which is yellow. And you can see this balance, this balance between the background and this four font. 
And then you can see they have put here some styles, all that. And then you can see there's an image here. So you can see the alignment uh, for this. And then you can see the alignment for this. And then you can see the type of typography that is being used, uh, like uh, the typeface is Times New Romans. And then the font size is 113. You can see the color is kind of yellow. Okay. And then we have uh, down here, you can see how these ones, they are aligned. And then you have more information here. So when we look at this, we can see there's good contrast, there's proper alignment, there's good typography, there's repetition of the design itself. So it's not in this in this case is not like content that is being repeated, though there is no much uh, repetition in this uh, design. There are many designs that you can see like repetition throughout. But we can talk of color. You can see this color here, and then this here, and then also the color for this. So you can see the. They are yellow, so there's repetition of color throughout. And then you can see the background is dark all through. So that's repetition. You can see the color for this text, this, this, and this one here. So there's also repetition in that, in that context. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give an assignment and that assignment should be done in Canva. And so the assignment will be very easy and you are to follow the design principles when you are doing the design. So you can study more on that. Uh, is there any question? So if there's no any question, I'm going to end the class. Uh, thank you. Uh, Emmanuel for being present and I look forward to seeing uh, the kind of work that you come up with.